we have a person to thank here. Uh, please, everybody, I think you who know, I am, but um, Brian Deneen, I am uh, mostly uh, the one to blame for any West. Uh, and uh, it's great to have you guys here. Good to see uh, so many people interested in development. Uh, Jerry Gray, I'd like to introduce Jerry, our Vice President, sitting right back there. Uh, yes. So he and I, uh, actually he, I got the key to the room and he fixed the network this time. Uh, so we bypassed the sign-on screen and there's no timeouts in the system anywhere, no software. It's a direct connection this, this year. Don't tell the hotel. No, <laughs> don't tell the hotel about that part. Uh, the hotel actually ordered the switch. Oh, oh cool. Uh, it will be in today. Ah. So uh, what we found was all the wall, all the wall wiring was feeding into a dead switch. So uh, they ordered a new one. No wonder we could never get it. Exactly. Uh, and Jerry's going to put it in. Uh, so uh, probably after the show, uh, because we're too busy doing the show. But anyway, that's how the network got fixed. And I'd like to also introduce him. Jerry has our second in command at MUS this year and for succeeding years. So uh, to replace uh, Chuck Washburn, who died uh, last year. Or the year before. Was the Here's the point. Here's the point. Goes fast. Time goes fast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so welcome. Uh, if you need anything, let us know. Uh, your ability to respond to that is limited, but uh, you know, usually the things that about hotel rooms and you know, things of that nature. Uh, if you need any running around, I'm here. First <laughs> the situations you're under. So, uh, and uh, welcome. Great to see you over here. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Oh, and sponsor me. Sponsor? For the death Did you mention that? No. Oh, oh the, yes. Uh, that's right. You were all attending. Sorry. I, I, I've done so much with it online that I thought everybody looked online. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm eager on the lake as a sponsor of this two day death count, paid for the rooms. Uh, oh, yeah. So they, yeah. Got, they, yeah. Right. They, right. uh, they were unable to come this year because they've had an incredible response to their. Uh, replacement keyboard deal, so they had 350 orders. Uh, they're madly building them, as we speak. So uh, that's uh, what they're, they're building and delivering. Uh, and it's probably going to take another six or eight weeks to get that. Takes about an hour and a half to build one. So, <laughs> and then they have to test it. So uh, test. Yeah, test. Yes. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Test. But you just ship. No, well. Something like Who do you think you are? Software <laughs> guy. Yeah, software guy. That's right. They're, they're actually shipping some of this Shipping this patch in pieces. Well, they are for, for people who ordered them. Yeah, people who ordered them. Right? Uh, but they're assembling for those who don't want to get into that. Uh, and that's what's really, that's what has to lead them. Uh, so they won't be here, but they are sponsoring. Uh, I understand that there will be a link available to order from them here on the floor uh, during the show. So uh, do visit the Amiga on the leg table. There will be one, and uh, somebody will be manning it. Uh, so, uh, and that has changed several times in the last week about who's going to be manning it. So uh, yeah. we'll find out on Friday. And there's rumors of a discount as well. Yeah, rumors of a discount, but we'll find out about that too. So thanks for mentioning that. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, welcome to the MUS. 2019 DEF CON! Yay! Yay. <laughs> Amiga DEF CON! Yay! I don't know if I have to pay royalties for that yet. No. Uh, it's very confusing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. That's fair uh, So, use. before we get started, I should remind everybody that this is being recorded. And it's going to be on the internet within seconds. Well, minutes. Hours. Um, <laughs> and so, if you want us to turn off the camera, just raise your hand, do something, say camera off, and then we'll have our chat and we'll turn it back on. Because there's some, some stuff is proprietary that we discuss, and some stuff is sensitive, and we don't want uh, anybody getting in trouble with NDAs and such. So just a reminder that for every company, whatever company you work for, <laughs> sometimes people say things. <laughs> um, I guess uh, just let Robert know in the back. Or, or 
me or somebody. Make sure we don't. And did everyone um, have a chance to see better? Okay. Everybody have a chance to see the agenda that I throw on the wiki? Not much of an agenda, not detailed, because we don't want to be um, rigid. We want to be flexible. So uh, one question I had was, did anybody bring any projects with them this, this year like that we want to look at? Like software projects. Rob Strzok. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. One project, yeah. I was going to talk to Hans about his book. And uh, was, that whole thing was an interesting discussion. Yeah, yeah, Hans de Ruder's uh, new, new book. New book, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking of going through that, but I didn't have time to set it up properly. I, I, I did, and that's why I wanted to, to talk to him about essentially using it as a, actually using it as a, like for you wanted to help people start programming. It, essentially, it's a really good tool to like beginners to start programming because it starts you in on type this in line by line, so you don't worry about what it says, just type it in. Right. And at the end of the thing, you'll start, you'll get familiar with what it means to type this in and this in, and then you'll, you know, there was a, yeah. I wanted to talk about that. So well, I guess we can talk to up. us. Yes, we can There's talk. a few of us that know a little bit about that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm not uh, I'm not a 3D expert by any means, but uh, well, but it's not. It doesn't it's matter. Not, it's not just a 3D. It's actually the typing in and and, yeah. and compiling. And you get up to a hello world for in 3D. Almost immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is cool. Which is cool. So we, we could go through that. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's a couple of projects. Well, <laughs> and, uh, we already went through in our introductions and sponsors and and the rule about the camera. If you want it off, just say so. Just to catch you up, Paul. <laughs> That's it. Um, sponsors of Beyond the Lake, in case you didn't know. Important info. <laughs> Covered the room for us. Uh, so I was going to dive into my Exec SG introduction. Exec SG team, team introduction, sorry. Team. I've seen the previous videos that you took around the introduction. Oh, do I? Yeah. Oh. Somebody does. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. It, it produced one. Would it? Yeah. Just to say who's here? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's I for you. I said hello to someone. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to remember all the names. <laughs> well, no, let, let them introduce themselves. Yeah. 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 Let's start with you. Who are you? I remember. Who are you? Dave. No. <laughs> no, Stephen, it's all late. I that, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Niels, it's your turn. Yes. Uh, yep. I'm Niels Berger from Denmark, and it's my first time here. I'm really excited about meeting you all. That's him. That's Niels. Yes, that's him. That's him. Yes. I know. Yeah. He lives. I know. Yeah. Come on, come on. We've, we've, we've all been right. so long. <laughs> 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 Niels, we can only actually say Olaf Berger for the first time. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm Michael Salcido. This is my 22nd time. Mm -hmm. 22. It's yeah. It's all. Anyway, I'm my, my background is uh, beta tester. Oh, oh uh, he's still working. Uh, I've been developing uh, professionally for, for most of my career, but not for many years. So. For shame. Yeah. So now life begins after retirement. <laughs> Get that man a compiler. <laughs> <laughs> I did mine. Bill did start to Michael, yeah. Bill Clay. And Bill Clay here. Robert yes. from Sacramento. <laughs> Robert behind the camera. Of course. <laughs> Jerry Gray, this is my third IBU West. He's the yeah. VP of the club now. Yeah. VP? Mm -hmm. Wow. He's yeah. been a power grab. I like yeah. it. <laughs> well, they said, who wants to be VP? And everyone stepped back. And I'm like, what? How does this work? <laughs> You missed a meeting. <laughs> I know how it works. Mark, I guess, the operator. Might be slower. And you, you've, uh, you've been busy right now, but just not lately. Already got struck. Yeah. A lot I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Always does, I guess, but that'll be my thing today. So later on, after lunch. LD just flew in. <laughs> oh, uh, LD Stevens been here since the first one. Very well. Yeah. First step. Since first step. Yeah. Good stuff. And no, I don't have any projects. 
<laughs> I'm primarily interested in um, some of the lower level Toronto stuff and I'm uh, curious to see what, what's yeah. coming. Of course. What do you want? And Paul? Paul Zatlik, beta tester of the Mingo OS and mm -hmm. other stuff. Critic? Yeah. <laughs> Mingo <Amiga> fanatic. <laughs> uh, you know, the only shit on it shall die, all that. <laughs> and some other guy. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. What is it? Let's just hang it out. My, uh, my partner from Canada. He says bouncer. <laughs> bouncer. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got to keep your mind. Yeah. 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 There you go. A little introduction. Keep your hands closed. All right. All right. So uh, back to back to my presentation. So uh, as you can see, there's a new logo. <laughs> what is this? Mech an exec SDT. Okay. So what happened? Well, uh, I have a magazine here. Future number 140, which was published quite some time ago now, September oh, something. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Trevor wrote how um, he's the owner of Exec SG. I don't know how it keeps getting confused, but <laughs> <laughs> Such a mess. once again, once again, <clears throat> now owned by Trevor Dickinson, the person. Not the person. <laughs> Not equal to anything else, Trevor Dickens in the person. A guy who lives in New Zealand. <laughs> um, why? Why? What? What? So I assume you're kind of wondering what, what happened maybe there. Why, why does Trevor own XXSG? How does that work? He gave somebody you're money. You're not curious, though? He gave somebody money. We're all curious. Yeah? Only the my seat. And, whoa, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> whoa, Trevor. <laughs> so, um, way back when, <laughs> Amiga Inc. and Hyperion were fighting. <laughs> I don't know what year that was, but... Yesterday? No, no, this is the latest one. That was this morning. 2003? 2001. One? That far? Okay, they were fighting. <laughs> Great. And um, Hyperion made the decision to take their kernel and chop it off of the OS and make it separate as a defense for the lawsuit, a defense against the lawsuit from the beginning, right? So that's how it started. They chopped it, and uh, Thomas Frieden and Hans Jörg Frieden um, took ownership, copyright ownership, they owned the source code, right? And they called it Exact SG, and they had some legal framework to make that work, a contract, basically. and. Uh, in the end, it, it helped them win. So Hyperion won the lawsuit in the end, and they got the settlement, settlement agreement. And, 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 and. But um, someone forgot to undo that. <laughs> that little chop off, right? And the Freedons were, were being paid regularly, according to contract. The contract is actually uh, on the web because it was part of discovery or whatever legal term it is, right? And um, you can see the terms in there and all, everything if you really cared, it's kind of irrelevant now, but um, the thing is that contract was never uh, satisfied, terminated, whatever it is, and um, time went on and on and on, and uh, the Freedons were thinking of getting some money, and Trevor was thinking of protecting his investments so the two kind of came together and went, well, hey, why don't I buy your country? Okay. <laughs> Here we are. That's it. There's not much else to it, right? And um, it, it is a private contract, again, because it's not out there for the public to see. So whatever the terms are, are the terms. And if Trevor wants to divulge them, then that's his business. But um, he owns it, copyright. Ownership of it. 
So he gets to decide what happens to it. So that, that's what happened. Now, what is exact SG? Exactly, I'll get into it a little later. But um, he owns it personally. But he gave him some money. He owned it. <laughs> and there's no doubt whatsoever. I don't know why the forums still discuss it. Like it's not happened. Whatever. They're totally and utterly wrong. No, we have it. Okay. Uh, in the process, in line two, he somehow I convinced them to put me as team lead. Actually, he approached me. <laughs> Wasn't my idea. <laughs> So how would you like to lead my team to fix up exec SGM? Well, look at that, I'm out of a job, I may as well, because <laughs> I thought, oh, well, you know, that's a good idea. So I'm gonna give it a spin, right? And I've been, um, I was delayed until, oh man, we started negotiations with Hyperion I'm thinking March, February, January. January we, we started. It really started going in March. We're in negotiations with between Trevor and Hyperion on what exactly this new relationship means. Right? Does it you know all the details? Like does it mean I can ship it and you can ship it? And how much money do I get from you? How much money do I give to you? And all those details. Took a long time to negotiate. I think it was resolved in July, wasn't it? Uh, why am I asking you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, we weren't there. It took a long time because I, I was ready to go in, in March, right? It's like, yeah, 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 let's go, let's go. And oh, there's some there's some nitpicking about the details. So they had to iron out another contract, a fresh one between the two of them. And uh, uh, now that was done. And uh, I was finally able to do something. And part of um, working with Exec G SG, of course, means working with Hyperion because they live together in harmony. So you can't just do your own thing and they can't do their own thing. We have to cooperate. And so I've been cooperating as much as possible with them, uh, which is why there isn't a blog and a whole bunch of information on the pub in, in the general public yet. Right? Because I'm trying to trying to balance what I want to do with the Exec SG team and what Hyperion wants to do with their information. So I'm trying to walk that tight with. Um, one of the things I did right away was get a new logo. <laughs> right. Now that might not seem like anything, but uh, I said okay if we have a new team, I need a logo so that you know who you're talking to, right? I wanted to make t-shirts or something, but I thought, well, it's, it's still a little raw, maybe I better not do that. <laughs> it's part of the tightrope, right? <laughs> um, Ken actually made us a logo, shoot, back in March, I think I asked for one. I said, okay, if I'm doing a new team, I need a logo to bring the team together, right? Something to rally behind and a vision and all that good stuff. So that's why I did that. First thing I do, yeah. I don't even look at source code. I want to load it. Right. <laughs> so uh, before I go on, any questions about the new ownership? Before we're so the yeah. partnership with Hyperion, Trevor's got the kernel, so Hyperion has the everything that rides on the kernel. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I have another diagram later on. Okay. Well, I guess I could flip it now. Oh, that's all right. If you've got it, I'll, I'll wait. It shows you. Maybe. No, it's it's good idea. Well, more importantly, which one are we actually using? The original Hyperion version of it or the newer version of it? There is no new version. It's the same source code. It's the same. It's just ownership has changed. Right, okay. Yeah, that's the trick. Ownership only changed. Uh -oh. Nothing else. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, I tried to, to make a little community. diagram here so we, to explain. A certain version of the kernel, for instance, which is the first one under the name Exit. Oh, actually, uh, which version you're, you're asking about? This? I'm not asking for the version. Um, no, just actually, Trevor the purchased. Fact is it's a progression of versions, and then at one point it becomes so X, SG. No, no. Actually, Trevor purchased all versions of all time. So all time. The name is future, past. Okay. He, wants, he wants copyright forever since it existed. <laughs> 
So all previous versions. <coughs> yeah. So there's no question about, okay, you own this, I own that. No, no. <laughs> that was part of the deal. Very important. I should have mentioned that, actually. It's, so he, he, he has the rights, Trevor owns the rights to it, all the way back to the, the original settlement thing. Yes. Uh, the date was 2001 that I saw in the source code. Right. So he's got copyright from its creation, which was 2001. That's back when it was 68K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were probably there, right? I was. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a 68K kernel with a little bit of PPC or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there were a few programs that got combined later with Google and so on. <laughs> oh, okay. Running on, on okay. the original Amico 17. I had a 4,000 uh, Cyberstorm PPC. And the first time the the native, the first native PPC kernel came on that, it mm. uh, it came up. <laughs> it hasn't run since. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, 4,000. Yeah, the, I I think it's the PPC actually the, the Cyberstorm. Yeah. But I haven't really. I had several other machines to run on, so I haven't really wow. had time to look at it since. That was before my time. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're the only guy that's been through it all, maybe. Maybe. Like, I started up just when they were doing the NC. Oh, you too? Yeah. Was it 68K kernel with the PPC extra? You had 68K of everything. Even the OS4 components were compiled both the 68K and PowerPC. And PowerPC. Ah. And then you could switch them. Yeah. Well, on a by component by component basis. <laughs> yeah. And rather either 68K, OS4, or ah. workbench. Or power PC one, and then over time they started coming off the 68K versions as power PC one. Fascinating. So Trevor owns all that. Well, no, but that was the, the entire yeah. OS. Was yeah, the, well, the, but the he owns just the yeah. current. Yeah. 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 yeah, interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Any other questions? Just to make it 100% clear. Yeah, just to be clear. Yeah. So and Ken, and Ken made the logo. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ken. With regards to 16K emulation layer, does that refer also to the 16K emulation. Or does that only refer to that which was developed by Thomas? That was the one that was developed by Thomas. Okay, so does that refer to So there's two emulators in, in four. There's the interpreted one and the just-in-time one. Right. And the interpreted one is owned by Trevor. Trevor Davidson. That's built in. That's built into the kernel, the interpreter. So you don't need Petunia, which is the JIT one, okay. at all. You can take it out, it still runs fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a, that's a trick. It just yeah. runs slower. Yeah. Well, I was told it runs slower. I don't actually know. I haven't tried it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. But you can blacklist things in Petunia, and then it'll get run on the. Uh, oh yeah. The yeah. When you blacklist stuff, it would drop down to, let's call it Trevor's and. <laughs> That's right. It actually did that all the way, all the way from the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was we right. could make the one in the kernel just in time. <laughs> There's lots of them out there. Crap. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting idea. <laughs> Uh, see, the, my only my only problem with Petunia is it's all in assembly code. Yeah, it's all that. Yeah, thank you. Martin, <laughs> did you do that in a shower? What are you talking about? Oh, just double whammy, gee. <laughs> is it? Okay, no more dev cards. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, it's just like the equivalent of using a shell versus a workbench. Oh. Assembly to C code. You're not nice, I'll give you whiskey again. Uh, please, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, bye. <laughs> Fill me up, yeah. Before noon. <laughs> Before fingers. What do you mean? It's afternoon. In Virginia. Oh, somewhere. <laughs> so, so, any more questions on the ownership? So, it's pretty clear, except what is it exactly? Yeah, just trying to piece it together. So like the 314, 32 releases, um, do those have kernel changes in them that you're involved in? 314 is a 68K. So 
So that, that's well, nothing to do with Trevor. Okay. No, All right. No. It's just a 60k emulation yeah. for Trevor. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because at, at some point in time, they they created a new kernel. Or 401. Because I believe the 68k one is an assembly. I think I don't know. I haven't looked at it in ages. <laughs> okay. Remember the. Uh, Three one code was published on the internet, so it's like, <laughs> and then they said, "Oh, you can't look at it." Oh, okay, I won't. Yeah, no, everyone said that. <laughs> I never got to see it. Sure, it's on the on the uh, archive.org or something, or I don't know. It's lots of copies. You seem to know where it is. I don't know. <laughs> it's for everyone to have that. Until the lawyers go. Um, <laughs> status. Okay, so its current status is there's a private repository we set up, there's a wiki and mailing list, and I'm setting up other services. Um, and work continues, basically, <coughs> but independent of Hyperion. Independent, so I don't have to talk to anyone at Hyperion to make changes to its XSD. Uh, all the kernels are building for all their targets, so uh, that's good. SDK has been released for testing internally to Hyperion and the kernels. And um, I wanted to mention there's been some progress as well. This is the interesting bits. You so, need a world? Yeah. So, <laughs> just added a new DMA engine for the P1022, P1022. What's the other guy? 50, 20, 50, 40. Yeah. So all those chips have a DMA engine built into them. A whole bunch of interesting stuff, which I'll discuss later. But, uh, and uh, we want to tap into that. And another thing we've recently changed was um, adding SPE accelerated routines into the kernel for the 10, uh, 1222. Code name table the board. Yeah. So it's now in the kernel. So everything just goes faster. You know, for copies and comparisons and string length and a whole bunch of routines. But that's uh, that's all preliminary changes, but it's changes, right? So it's marching on and the odd little fix here and there and <laughs> it's it's moving finally. Uh, I didn't get the changes happening until uh, a week ago. <laughs> September. <laughs> September is really when we've got things moving. Yeah. Right? It was all just me sitting there on the repository making things build. And then start adding people. So I'm adding people slowly to the team to, so it doesn't explode. <laughs> and things don't get out of hand. <laughs> and uh, just trying to build it up. And uh, anyway, we'll talk more about that yeah. later. Yeah. Steering committee. So. One of the things, as you know from that other diagram, is, well, the rest of the OS is still there. So how do we coordinate, right? <laughs> how do we coordinate visions? So uh, we set up a steering committee, as we call it. And there's three of us on the committee, Trevor, Timothy, myself. And we decide whether we to add multi-core support, whether to switch to ARM CPUs, to go x64 if we want to, right? Those decisions are done by these people. Because <laughs> you need uh, these high level decisions that affect businesses to make sense. Because we don't want to go off on a tangent, you know, maybe we want to, I don't know, run Atari software, right? <laughs> I don't know why, but. Land on Mars. You know, and then I'm hearing, what, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Or vice versa, like Hyperion goes off and does something very strange that we don't quite agree with, right? <laughs> so, so you and Timothy uh, argue the tech side, and, and Trevor is the referee. Sure. Because he's, <laughs> he's the one that says yes in order to money. That, that's right. When it comes to funding, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no yeah surprises. That, no surprises. that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's three people, so it can't be deadlocked. <laughs> if there's any voting. Trevor's I don't always, think there's voting, but... Trevor's always in the side you vote. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> what if you and Timothy disagree with Trevor? 
disagree with Trevor. He'd take him down. <laughs> Part of the people. Part of the people. So he's on the moment. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 all the people. Oh, well, he's at that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're giving it a try. Yeah, we're giving it a try. So that, that's, uh, that's a good framework, I think, because it only makes sense, because it's kind of a strange scenario to have your kernel owned by someone else. <laughs> but in the, in the computer world, it's normal. Things are getting strange. People own pieces of OSs, and you, you wouldn't believe, right? And if you ever look at the license agreements of all the components in iOS, for example, Apple doesn't own hardly anything. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> did you see how many pages log it is? <laughs> it's about 16 pages. Yeah, I mean they're co-owners or they're licensees, but it, it, that's that's the way the world is. You don't have one company that can do everything. It's just too complicated. Even uh, something simple like a TCP IP stack. You buy it now. You don't build it. Why would you build it? It's silly, right? <laughs> It's the same, uh, not only with OS, but also the big uh, uh, corporate systems and... Uh, big corporate systems. Yeah. They're all like that. Yeah. 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 They're owned by different groups. And then you get the little power struggles, too. Right? Uh, that's, uh, that's happened in, uh, in the company I work for at the moment. They, uh, they say, oh, I don't like that this guy owns this. So we're going to go with this guy and replace it with that. And, do this and say, you know how long that's going to take? Two years or three years to do that. I don't care. I don't like him anymore. It's like, okay, it's your wasted effort. <laughs> and then when you finish, that guy you don't like buys the company you just moved to. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, the guy you don't like, <laughs> suddenly they go and buy the thing you were just trying to move to. It took too long. Right? That, that happens a lot. Yeah. Surprisingly, like you, the companies acquire each other, suddenly, oh, oh no, him again. <laughs> yeah. So that's normal, right? So it's not like it's the end of the world. <laughs> and then in 4.1, 4. 4. all sorts of people own pieces. So this is just one. <laughs> now the dev teams. So this is kind of a informational and uh, promotional at the same time. So I don't have very many people on the team just yet. I have a few. So you got Thomas, Tony, Olaf. Colin, Jamie, Frederick, and myself. And um, adding people as we go. That's the current current team, right? So they're all cleared. I have uh, I have NDAs for everybody because it is separate. I'm trying to write it separate. For Frederick. Yep. There was some on the on the video this recently about whether Trevor had signed it yet. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's a little bit of chatter, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's an interesting scenario. Trying to trying to keep the uh, corporations happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, I, but some of these, but some of these guys, of course, are already on appearance. Um, I think they all are. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. I, they also work for Hyperion. Yeah. Yeah. I I see a lot of the crosstalk. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what I, I kind of decided this at the beginning. I said, okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna be independent. We got to be independent. So I want to see independent legal paperwork for everybody. So there's nobody will come along and say, hey, is that guy under NDA? Right? No, no here it is. Boy. <laughs> can, a legal, can a legal beagle say, well, since I had Thomas first, you know, you mine supersedes yours? No, that's not. No. You could you. Like, imagine you, right? You want to work for Walmart? No. <laughs> you want to work for the competitor who's Amazon? Mm -hmm. Do they have a say in who you work for? Yes. Yes. Not in a normal corp. A normal country, no. <laughs> <laughs> they have no say. <laughs> this is America. Unless you sign Maybe something. Maybe in the U.S. Unless sure. you sign something that says, I have a non, non compete. Now, uh, those. Even in California, that doesn't hold. It's See, the right work state. Most it doesn't always hold that because they work in the industry. Yeah, it's not that easy. Okay. It's great. You can't you can't stop someone from working to feed their family. That doesn't make any sense. So, 
any judge will strike that down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's one yeah. company that said, okay, you've got to sign this agreement. Yeah. Anything you develop while you're working here is ours. Well, the, that's intellectual property rights. Yeah. That's a different animal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when you're, when you're under someone else's money, it kind of makes sense that they own what you did. <laughs> Isn't the premise that it has to have been done during work hours? Yeah, well, then, uh, then it gets gray again. Not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I've seen, yeah. I've seen uh, court cases that try to grab it, yeah. even though the guy he left the company a year ago and oh, really? worked in his home bedroom, and they come and they raid it and take it all. That's, oh, yeah. It's, that, that's the way this one was written up. It it's take messy. forever. Yeah, again, thank goodness we have judges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your small team is, you're, and you're looking for more people for your team? Yes, yes, I am. I am always looking for more people. Um, I don't think I, anyone's, oh, oh, yeah, I had a few volunteers that said, I want to come to <laughs> Whoa, whoa, just wait a bit. How about just testers? Uh, testers are an interesting problem. Yeah, there's too many of them already. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, I'm utilizing Hyperion's testers. That's the way it's working right now. But I was like, oh, you know, what if I don't want to use Hyperion? <laughs> and you can use the AAE on testers. Yeah, but then how does that work legally? It's <laughs> like, oh. Oh, and it's the same people anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, same people, but you can't just assume anything in the corporate world. So uh, the easiest route is just to utilize uh, Timothy people, right? As long as he allows it. Why not? I mean, it's the same OS. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. It all makes probably sense. Probably the only group of people who you will find that have the experience and, and the knowledge about yeah. the, uh, uh, what you say, uh, Surroundings, the whole, the context the whole thing, yeah. yeah. So right now it makes sense, but uh, you know, who knows? In the future we can do whatever. But you got to do what makes sense, and you don't want to waste time doing divisions where you don't need divisions, right? This makes sense. <laughs> but I, I do like the idea of uh, utilizing the E on the um, beta testing team too. But I'm like, well, yeah, no, yeah, maybe, no, maybe. So I don't know. <laughs> like, you, like you mentioned, most of them are already Hyperion beta testers anyway, so what are you gaining? Other than... Um, a few that are probably not yeah. in the league you want. Yeah, yeah, a few, maybe you don't want them anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's an interesting, interesting thing to think about. Because I don't know what the legal framework would be. I think I would have to get NDAs for every tester. That's a pain in the butt. I don't want to do that. I'm lazy. <laughs> anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, so right now I'm just looking for developer help. So anybody who wants to help on ExecSG, there's my email. <laughs> uh, what is ExecSG? Yeah, I keep saying that, right? So <clears throat> I found out what it stood for. <laughs> Executive second generation. <laughs> I think most people knew that, but I wasn't sure. Second generation, so the, they marked the first one was designed, and as far as I know, coded by Carl Sassana, who's been here before. So you might, might have uh, had the chance to meet him. Um, he did that under Amiga, I think it was at the time, and then Commodore bought Amiga. He originally developed it under the banner of Amiga 8. In I don't know what state they were appropriated in. Here. Here, California. It was in California? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they could work out of Los Gatos. Ah, okay. So they were always they were in local. California? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's actually a banner. It's a collection of things. Like if you're running your OS, which you are, <laughs> um, ExecSG is actually a few things that you notice, like different components or products. Uh, like I mentioned, Exec Library, that's obviously Exec. But it also includes Expansion Library, which you might not be familiar with. And then Utility Library, which is kind of a dumping ground for all sorts of things. Emulator Resource, which is the x86 black box emulator. Uh, it also includes Amiga Boot, which is a bootloader. 
of sorts. Uh, kick layouts. If you know the kick layouts, those are part of it. Uh, dump debug buffer and the utilities like that. Memstat. Uh, a few odds and ends. K debug. Yeah, another little thing, right? Uh, pool stat. I think it's called. So as a tester, you're like, well, what is this? <laughs> is this this guy or this guy? <laughs> Do you care? Not really. <laughs> if you're filing bug reports, it's like, can I just put it in? You figure it out. Right. So that's what I'm trying to keep it at right now. Just pretend it didn't happen. I'll take care of who, who works on what. Right? <laughs> Speaking of bug reports, I assume we're also still uh, running with uh, normal Bugzilla. Uh, yeah, right now I'm using Hyperion's Bugzilla as well, right? which makes sense, sort of. Uh, it's going to get ugly when I add non-Hyperion developers, because they're not allowed to see Hyperion stuff without an NDA. And a bug report may contain proprietary information. So I am thinking about copying the bug reports to our private bug report repository to keep, them, to keep the corporations happy. <laughs> what pain in the neck? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be easier if anybody you hired were also made hyper testers? Oh, but that will not yeah. happen. Oh, no, there's people I want to hire. Uh, a hyperion will never hire. <laughs> to the world where they Hyperion in its history has burned a lot of bridges. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't have that problem with exec SD. So <laughs> you can imagine the fun. <laughs> yeah. But see I'm keeping it simple for now though, right? I'm trying to keep it simple. So I haven't added anybody that is outside the scope yet because I don't really want copy bug reports. <laughs> <laughs> Very lazy, but, but at some point we are going to be adding people that Hyperion will not be adding, and then we'll di diverge on teams, and it'll become a little bit of a problem for me because I don't know how to share the information with uh, maybe there's some agreement that can be made up that says we can share bug report information between the two. Yeah, between you won't only really have that problem. Yeah. And also have it the other way around that some of your developers will need to know uh, mm -hmm. about bug reports made uh, towards Hyperion products because they interact. Yeah, and there are some interaction points. You're right. You're right. <coughs> and those are sticky because it's like I have to make keep the company happy. <laughs> it's like you. <laughs> but I mean, this is a this is a problem. They, it's always been there. And in the past, people just said, okay, Hyperion, you host the source code, right? But then when we did that, there's people Hyperion couldn't have on their team. And we ran into friction. And things like MUI disappeared. It's not in the repository. So this isn't new. It's just problems with corporations. <laughs> when you have rights owned by different and something else may shake up after all the uh, settlements and all the legal proceedings. Oh yeah, you never know what's going to happen next. Yeah, yeah. yeah last, last time I talked to uh, Carl Sathrat, he was making more money testifying in court than he wasn't uh, actually working it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, I heard that from Carl too. He said he's making a, a lot of money being an expert witness, basically, yeah. in court cases. A lot. Because <laughs> they go back to the guy who wrote it, right? Did you really do blah, blah, blah? <laughs> yeah. It's companies fighting over rights, right? So you bring in the expert witness. <laughs> he mentioned that, yeah, yeah. I remember that too. Making a lot of money doing an expert witness. <laughs> well, even the, even the current... Um, Hyperion battle, they had expert witnesses too. 
again. Right. You gotta pay them, or I don't know if they'll do it for free. Because <laughs> being an expert witness is a pain. So, yeah, anyway, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, the XF STK was released as well at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> um, that's part of XF SG2. The software development kit is part of XFSD. And that's the reports available to everybody? That's the thing, eh? See? <laughs> now you're starting to get it. What do you mean? Can I just have it right now then? <laughs> well, is Hyperion going to say in that? Technically not. They don't own it. So <laughs> here we go, right? <laughs> now you know why this is a bit of a. Yeah, and this happens with all the components that are not, are not fully owned. You have to make deals with the owners, right? Like uh, uh, the USB stack, same problem. But he allows us to use everything. That's if I was like right? Um, just let's, let's, let's it happen. Not because he felt like it. Right? So, so he, he just, he could change his mind. And then bang, you, you can't do it anymore. Which has happened. Which has happened. Uh, remember York? Yeah. Yeah, he said, oh no, you can't use my component anymore. Because you did whatever it was. And, oh, oh. <laughs> or, uh, it, it's happened in, didn't Microsoft get caught with that too? A couple times, where, where utilities would disappear because they had a battle with the original authors. It's not new. <laughs> well, it's getting old because they're beginning to realize that's a problem. So they're trying to well, not let that happen. Yeah, I, I, how do we term it? A risk. Term it a risk, right? So you kind of take your chances. Uh, maybe you won't have to sue us until next year. We'll change it. Or you give them a little bit of money or you give a little bit of something. Oh, you can't afford the lawyer. Yeah, usually you don't go to court because it's just not worth fighting over, but you have to give and take. Yeah. yeah. So the SDK isn't readily available? Well, like if Hyperion has a copy, try to figure out what we're going to do with the exec SG portion. But Hyperion hasn't released anything. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's like, we'll be patient to a point. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> Nothing gets released, but something will change. So. <laughs> there is only so much patience. Um, what is Exec SG? So what, what is it again? It's still going, right? So it's a lot of things. So it's uh, it's got all sorts of services in it, right? Like memory management, right here. Task scheduling, messaging, interrupt management, shared library, device management. Then it's got some stuff you might not know. Zorro and PCI bus management. That's part of ExecSD. Um, 60K emulation, debugging interface, tag lists, UTF-8 support is in ExecSD. Kind of a strange thing to have in the kernel, but there it is. And a few more things. Like there's a big long list of things that are in ExecSD, which can really confuse testers and users, because they're like, what is it? What is that? As long as you don't get confused. We know what it is. <laughs> we have the source code, so we know exactly what it is. Um, did I mention the boot booter is not? So really we're, sure. we're going to start calling you Torvalds. Oh, what? We're going to start calling you Torvalds? Torvalds? Uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Linus. Linus? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a character. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting fellow. Not necessarily what we're going to Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it depends. Yeah. It's some He's one of those uh, figures that, you know, difficult to yeah, deal with. Diplomacy is not as strong as it is. Did you say <laughs> the, the loader is also included in this package now, the turnaround? Sorry? The loader, the kickstart loader. Yes, the loader is part of Exit Kesky. Okay. Yeah. And, and, um, What is the difference between a Neoboot and the loader? Thank you. Well, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, 
from what I can tell. <laughs> right. Amiga Boot is kind of, I wish Tony was here, because he actually yeah. knows. Um, Amiga Boot runs the loading of the kernel. Okay. It parses the kick layout. And the loader is used to load each piece. Yeah. So Amiga Boot calls. Did I get that right, Nils? Yeah. 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 So, because you know when it says align uh, load driver blah, the loader is loading that driver to memory. It's Amiga Boot that makes up the, the if, if you're not running with fire mode in, in your boot, it's Amiga Boot that makes up the list of uh, uh, boots, uh, partitions you can boot from and uh, where you can select one. Uh, and then it kicks it off. Oh, the loader actually that. shows you the list of kick layouts? So, so Amiga, I thought Amiga Boot did Amiga that. Boot. Okay, Amiga yeah, Boot yeah. gives you the list. Yes. The loader will uh, load the pieces. Yes, but the that's layout. the loader that, that you select because yeah. you select one. Actually, position. yeah, the loader is so, selectable, isn't it? Because oh. you, you specify it in the kick layout, I thought. Oh, yeah, that's true, true. Yes. Is this a catch 22? Yeah. <laughs> uh, normally, you would just use the loader that yeah. is part of that installation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember it has a, it always has to be first, yeah. the loader. Yeah. So you, the, I think the idea was, way back, that you could put a Linux loader in there. I think that was the original intent. Uh, I have to ask Valenodo again, because he, he's the guy who kind of designed this this system, as far as I know, in New York or somebody, um, so that they could swap out pieces or they could boot a different OS, or all sorts of strange well, things. That's also, right? wasn't that how they did some of the 68K stuff? Because you could put in, oh, yeah. swap out pieces yeah. ah. in the kick layout if you wanted to run a, you know, like we do with oh, the yeah, kernel, yeah. the debug kernel. Yeah. Yeah. You could run a 68K version of it, yeah. and then just run yes. the next one. Yeah. That makes sense, right? And then he also said he wanted to extend it beyond uh, Amiga OS to use any component from any yeah, yeah, and I, I think it also had the nice side effect of uh, dodging the GPL. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because uh, if you dynamically link, you can kind of, sort of, pretend it's not GPL. <laughs> I just got recorded. Right? Right, LD? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yep. See, that, because there's the L GPL, which is actually designed for and then there's the GPL. And every time I look at the FAQ for the GPL, it says, yeah, you can dynamically link and do it, but you're breaking the spirit. The spirit. The spirit. I <laughs> So let's say you're a corporation. What do you care about spirits, right? <laughs> Unless you sell candy for the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a it's an ongoing debate that's never been settled. I don't think it's been tested in court, as far as I know. Dynamic linking GPL, because I used to work for uh, Northern Telecom, Northern. We shipped tons of GPL stuff, tons of it, on the base stations, and never gave them a dime. Right, and we said this is our product. That was back in the 80s. <laughs> so. Well, Nortel management was well known for being above board with excellent ethics and morals. I'm sure they would be shocked to hear this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you, the GPL is very clear that you should not put GPL components even on the disk. Very clear about that. Don't confuse the customer is what they're saying, right? It's in the FAQ. I'm not making it up. Don't do it. Well, that's so how do you dynamically load it. So you know what Nortel did? You know what they did? Two disks. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've loaded from scratch, put in our disk, and then you put in this mystery disk that you don't need to know about. <laughs> All the GPL stuff was on the second disk. They just to give you a link to a web page to download it. Or link to a website to download it. Okay. Some kind of slightly arm's length, okay, to pretend it's not really. 
elbows like. Yeah, elbow. <laughs> this elbows like, interlock. <laughs> no, no, yeah, everybody's been doing it. It doesn't mean it's right, but this, everybody's been doing it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but it does. I, I agree with, um, with the, uh, the Free Software Foundation that it is creepy. And it does confuse users because if I talk to someone who's not technical, they'll say, I don't know, it's on the desk. I assume it's yours. Like if it says Microsoft Windows and I'm running a GPL program, it must be part of Microsoft Windows, right? Are they no difference? <laughs> yeah, well, the maximum works. Right? The maximum works. Yeah. yeah. Full of GPL, right? But, you know. <laughs> It, it's all about giving the user the choice. So the user has the choice to get the source code and change it. So it's all about it's all about the user. It's not about the company. <laughs> if the user's confused, if they can't get the source code, you're breaking the spirit. That, that's the that's the I guess that's the speech of the day. Eh? <laughs> it's not even a matter of paying for it or not. It's nothing to do with payments. No. It's all about giving the user the right to have the source code. Yeah. And if it's confusing, then you broke the spirit. <laughs> so we can't have the SDK yet. <laughs> the SDK doesn't have any GPL in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that answers that one. Kernel doesn't, as far as we know. Anything? No, it doesn't. GCC is not GPL? GCC is, yes. But, ah, another exception. GCC has a little clause in there saying, don't worry about it. <laughs> Explicitly. Yeah, yeah. And they say anything you make with GCC is not GPL either. Because GPL to make it. <laughs> the, it's yeah. sort of the useful, that's the GCC. Otherwise, <laughs> who would use it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, yeah. But that's the idea that the user gets to choose. That the right. user has the power, yes, not the company. So you do, you use GCC, yeah. then you call it. Yes. What, what thing you want to. It's all about power, if you want to say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and it, well, you know, it's, they, they've taken down Cisco, so it is powerful. No company too big to take down. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, any more questions on what is exactly ST? Yeah, probably, because no, no, no. it's confusing, is it? Yeah, good. So you're confused? <laughs> Still don't know. It's this stuff and this stuff, but you know. <laughs> and there's more stuff at the bottom. <laughs> and more, yeah. And I, much more. I, I want your telephone number hotline so that I can find out. A hotline? Oh, that's a good idea. I'll send it straight to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Trevor just enters the room. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah, the hotline will go straight to Trevor. I'm sure he'll he happy to answer. He heard his name, but he didn't hear anything else. <laughs> so back to my diagram. <laughs> so we, we, we've seen a little bit of this before. So I tried to color it because Hyperion likes orange. And I like red. So <laughs> we don't like red in the back. This is kind of showing you which pieces are still Hyperion on which pieces are Trevor on? <laughs> or, Cor or, or corporately on? Hmm? Or corporately on? Or, no, no, this is Trevor the person, not a corporation. Uh, U boot is part of AE on? No. No? No, U boot's GPL. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> they do not own it. <laughs> okay, let me see. They, they could own the changes to a certain point, but they still can keep it from you. <laughs> They're not supposed to. They legally can't. Yes, okay. to force <laughs> <laughs> So uh, U-Boot, CFE, I didn't look at the CFE license. I assume it's GPL. Did anybody look? It's another firmware. Open firmware, I didn't really look at that one either, see if it's GPL or not. I don't remember. I assume it is. Isn't that Apple's? Open firmware is Apple's? Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's, that's the, or their fusion comes in, right? Yeah. 
Well, if you get the source code for open firmware, no problem. So do they own it? <laughs> That's a good no. <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> they worked on it a lot, right? Yeah. Because that was when they were in the power PC stage. Yeah, yeah. CFE is Broadcom? Broadcom. One of the time. CFE? I think is owned by Broadcom. I it makes sense. They use it in yeah. all the directories and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I looked that one up before I came. Open firmware started at Sun. Sun started it, yeah. And then okay. it's used by Sun, Apple, IBM, ARM, and most non-X86 PC I chipset vendors. There you go. Wikipedia? Yeah. Thank you. Paul is now the Google. He's my fact checker. <laughs> should almost have one, hey? <laughs> Everybody should have one. Well, it's Wikipedia. <laughs> God, this assumes Wikipedia is accurate. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, it isn't anymore. <laughs> Just changed it. <laughs> now I agree with it. Oh, yeah, I disagree. <laughs> That's collective truth. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, as you can see, it, it's an integral part of Amigo OS, right? It's, you can't have one without the other. So, the OS and exactly the executive are all together. <laughs> so I was trying to point out. But the, the thing that was interesting was this part. Because usually you shouldn't care about this, but as beta testers you generally do, because that's where things go wrong. But it's important to know that this part here is owned by things or it's part of XFSG as well. So the good one of the other things I want to champion is to make that simpler and faster. Especially fast. So why does it spend so much time in reboot? I want it to the OS as fast as possible. Two seconds. Right? That's what we should aim for.